Who created humans? Who brings the moon? Welcome to the Eye of Truth. What is the story behind humanity's emergence on Earth? There are multiple theories about this, but we don't have a definitive answer yet. If someone told you that the key to understanding our origins is hidden in the moon, you might be puzzled. However, these two seemingly unrelated things are actually connected in various ways. In this video, I will explore the secret of the moon's and humanity's origins through myths and stories from different cultures and the findings of modern science while also offering some personal speculations. The information presented in this video may be groundbreaking, so please consider it a work of science fiction. Keep an open mind and enjoy the mind-blowing ideas. From Earth's perspective, the Moon and the Sun appear to be the same size, which is what allows for total solar eclipses to occur. While this might seem normal to us, it is actually quite rare in the solar system. The Sun has a diameter of 1,390,000 kilometers, while the Moon's diameter is only 3,400 kilometers, which is 1 395th the size of the Sun. The distance between the Sun and Earth is 150 million kilometers, while the distance between the Moon and Earth is only 380,000 kilometers, a difference of exactly 395 times. This is why the Sun and Moon appear to be the same size from Earth. This phenomenon can only be observed from Earth among all the planets in the solar system. Additionally, considering the size of Earth, the Moon is surprisingly large as its satellite. Because of these peculiarities, astronomers often say that the Moon's current position is an accident. Going even deeper, the Roche limit is a boundary that determines the safety of a satellite in relation to a planet. If a satellite is within the Roche limit of a planet, the planet's tidal forces will destroy it. It is thought that Saturn's rings were formed when one of its satellites crossed the Roche limit and was torn apart by tidal forces, leaving its debris to form a ring around the planet. In contrast, the Hill sphere is the region where a planet's gravity is strong enough to exert control over a satellite. If a satellite goes beyond the planet's Hill sphere, it will escape the planet's gravitational influence. This wide range allows for satellites to be positioned at various distances from the Earth. However, the Moon is located at an unusually coincidental distance of 380,000 kilometers from the Earth, which allows it to appear the same size as the Sun when viewed from the Earth. As you may know, the Moon is slowly moving away from the Earth at a rate of 3.8 centimeters per year. So in the distant future, the Moon will no longer appear to be the same size as the Sun when viewed from the Earth. On the other hand, in the distant past, it is possible that the Moon may have appeared larger than the Sun when viewed from the Earth. Interestingly, when I researched this topic, I came across an unusual fact. There are no records or stories about the Moon from any culture prior to the story of the Great Flood caused by a deity. For instance, the ancient Chinese book Shan Hai Jing, which was written in the 4th century BC, describes a great flood that destroys the entire world. However, all stories and characters related to the Moon appear after this great flood. Native American oral traditions also include stories about a time when there was no Moon in the sky only the Sun. Ancient Greek tales also contain similar stories. In this way, in many cultures and countries, stories about the Moon appear after the story of the Great Flood. I will explore the possible reasons for this later in the video. First, let's examine the story of the Great Flood in more detail. The Great Flood, which is considered to be a myth or legend, is actually recorded in the ancient documents of many countries around the world. Nearly all major ancient civilizations, including the Bible, the Sumerian civilization, the ancient Greek civilization, ancient Egypt, ancient China, and ancient India, have recorded stories about the Great Flood. This raises an interesting question. Why were the same stories passed down on each continent in the distant past when there were no means of communication or transportation? The only reason that can be thought of is that the Great Flood, which is said to have destroyed the entire world, 
was not a legend, but rather a historical event. Based on this information, let's delve deeper into the true identity of the moon. Please note that from here on, this will be my speculation. A long time ago, a race of extraterrestrial beings with advanced scientific technology came to this Earth using a spaceship for some purpose. Upon arriving on Earth, they positioned their spaceship close to the Earth, and the distance between the two was likely close enough that part of the spaceship was within the Earth's atmosphere. The spaceship had an anti-gravity device, so even at such a close distance, it did not collide with the Earth. In addition, a space elevator was installed between the Earth and the spaceship. At that time, there were no living beings on Earth yet. But through their intervention, various forms of primitive life were created. They then observed the evolution of this primitive life and tried to create an intelligent life form that was most suited to the Earth's environment. In the process of this, they successfully built civilizations multiple times, and intelligent life forms flourished on the surface of the Earth. However, until their perfect work was completed, they repeated the process multiple times. In the process of repetition, in order to create the next work, the failed work had to be erased from the surface of the Earth. One way to do this was to cause a global flood. They stopped the operation of the anti-gravity device installed on the spaceship, causing a great flood. When the anti-gravity device was turned off, the spaceship moved outside the Roche limit of the Earth to avoid colliding with it or being destroyed but the sudden increase in gravity caused a great flood on the Earth. As a result, the land on the Earth's surface completely disappeared, and even flying creatures eventually fell into the sea due to exhaustion. Once all the failed works were eliminated and the great flood subsided, they returned the spaceship to Earth's surface and began creating the next generation of works. It is not known how many times this process was repeated, but according to Mayan mythology, Four civilizations were born before the current human race appeared on Earth. If the story in Mayan mythology is true, we humans, who appeared as the fifth generation, are their latest work. We humans referred to these extraterrestrial beings as gods and recorded them in various ways. In Western culture, their spaceship was called the Garden of Eden or Paradise, and in Eastern culture, it was called Ten or Tian which means the place gods live. The space elevator connecting the spaceship and the Earth was also recorded in various ways, such as the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, the Buzo Mountain in ancient Chinese classics, the Mountain Sinai in Jewish oral tradition, and the Mountain Olympus in Greek mythology. In addition, the great flood caused by these extraterrestrial beings was also recorded in stories such as Noah's Ark. Of course, the extraterrestrial beings themselves were also recorded in various ways in different cultures. In one of the oldest ancient civilizations, the Sumerian civilization, there is a mention of a god called Anunnaki in ancient documents. Anunnaki means those who came down from heaven in Sumerian. From this meaning, it can be inferred that Anunnaki is not a name for a single god but a general term for gods. According to various descriptions in ancient documents, the Anunnaki were believed to be giants with lifespans of more than 250,000 years. This lifespan matches the information in another ancient document from the Sumerian civilization, called the Sumerian King List. The Sumerian King List is a document that records the general history of the Sumerian civilization. It divides the Sumerian civilization into two periods, before and after the Great Flood. There were eight kings in the period before the Great Flood, whose total reign lasted about 250,000 years, with an average of 30,000 years per person. After the Great Flood, there were several dozen kings, with reigns of 300 to 1,200 years per person, significantly shorter than the kings before the Flood. At first glance, it may seem that the Sumerian king list is simply a myth. However, the reigns of the 23 kings that follow are shortened to just a few years, and the names and reigns of each king match those in recognized historical documents with a high degree of accuracy. This suggests that the Sumerian king list is not just a myth, 
but reflects real history. In other words, it is highly likely that the Sumerian civilization had contact with extraterrestrial beings who created the civilization on Earth, and that the Anunnaki and Sumerian kings mentioned in Sumerian classics and myths may be depictions of these beings. Now, let's take a closer look at the Anunnaki mentioned in Sumerian mythology. According to the myth, there were various Anunnaki, each with their own mythological episode. But the ones I would like to introduce here are Enki and Ninhursag, who had the strongest connection to humanity. Enki means king of the earth. In Sumerian mythology, he is considered the god of life and water, and is one of the important gods who gave humanity civilization. His appearance is human from the waist up and snake from the waist down. Ninhursag is Enki's sister and also his wife, and she is the goddess who presides over fertility and abundance. Like Enki, she has a human upper body and a snake lower body. The two of them work together to nurture human civilization. In addition to the Anunnaki, the highest gods in Sumerian mythology, there are also lower gods called the Igigi, who are ruled by the Anunnaki. The Igigi means watcher in Sumerian. At one point, the Igigi rebelled against the Anunnaki's rule in an attempt to escape their control, but in the end, they were all eradicated by the Anunnaki. After this, there is a story that Enki began trying to create intelligent life in order to create a replacement for the Igigi. Considering this, it is possible that the Igigi were the civilization before humanity that was deemed a failed creation by the Anunnaki. If the identity of the extraterrestrial beings who created the Earth civilization is really the Anunnaki, as described in Sumerian mythology, then we should expect to find similar beings in the ancient documents of other cultures. In fact, there are beings that are clearly identified as being similar to the Anunnaki in other myths. As mentioned earlier, Enki and Ninhursag, who raised human civilization in Sumerian mythology, are both husband and wife and siblings with human upper bodies and snake lower bodies. Similarly, in ancient Chinese mythology, Fu Ji and Nu Hua are also husband and wife and siblings, with human upper bodies and snake lower bodies. They cooperated to give humans wisdom and civilization. In Indian mythology and ancient Egyptian mythology, there are also gods who are husband and wife and siblings, with half of their body in the shape of a snake. In addition, in these stories, the lifespan of ancient kings or emperors was longer than that of modern times, with many cases of 100 to several hundred years. From other countries' classics, there are also many stories of ancient kings living for hundreds of years. These also match the information recorded in the Sumerian king list. As we can see, the existence of the Anunnaki, who created humanity, is believed to have been transmitted and worshipped in various forms among people around the world. Additionally, the Agigi, who tried to escape from the control of the Anunnaki, may be the same as the rebellious fallen angels called Watchers that appeared in the Old Testament. Based on this information, it is possible that the source of all mythologies is the they who had contact with the Sumerians. In many mythologies from around the world, there are similar accounts of the creation of humanity. For example, in the Bible, God is said to have created the world in six days and on the seventh day created a body made of clay and gave it consciousness by breathing into its nostrils, resulting in the birth of Adam, the original ancestor of humanity. In ancient Chinese mythology, Nu Hua, who I mentioned earlier, created a human body made of clay and gave it consciousness by breathing into it, resulting in the birth of humanity. In Greek mythology, the god Prometheus created a similar object made of clay, and the goddess Athena, who is responsible for wisdom, was amazed by the beauty of the work and gave it consciousness by breathing into it. These myths of the creation of humanity from different cultures and continents share common elements. In these myths, it is believed that they are simple depictions of the birth process of human beings at the time. This birth process could be interpreted as the use of gene manipulation technology 
to create a new race on Earth with advanced intelligence by integrating the DNA of the Anunnaki into the DNA of animals on Earth. This may have been done because creating a species with the same level of abilities as the Anunnaki could lead to rebellion, as seen with the failed creation of the Igigi. The use of animals in this process may have been a way to ensure that the new race could be controlled. In modern terms, the clay in these myths could be interpreted as the animals on Earth at the time, while the breath is likely the DNA of the Anunnaki race. I think that the commonality between humanity, the current work, and the four previous works is the presence of Anunnaki DNA, or the breath in these myths. However, it is likely that the clay, or the animals used in the creation process, differed between each of the five civilizations. For humanity, primates may have been used as the clay, while in previous civilizations, reptiles such as dinosaurs may have been used. This could be because dinosaurs were the dominant creatures on Earth before humans were created. There are also urban legends of humanoid reptilian creatures called reptilians that are well integrated into human society. These legends may suggest that the races of previous civilizations still exist on Earth today, even though the Great Flood of the Past was intended to erase these works. From what has been said so far, it may seem that I am denying Darwin's theory of evolution. However, I believe that Darwin's theory of evolution is not wrong. Evolution does indeed exist, and this has been proven by many pieces of evidence. However, the theory of evolution is only a theory that explains the process of evolution of living things, not a theory that explains how life was born. In other words, what I am trying to say is that the Anunnaki may have created species with potential intelligence on Earth through genetic engineering techniques and evolved them. This makes it possible for intelligent life forms suitable for the Earth's environment to be born. Their spaceship still remains in a perfect location on the orbit of the Earth's satellite, and people on the Earth now have given it the name Moon. Does the anti-gravity device still exist in it? Is there still something they or something they left behind in the Moon? Are we their perfect work? Why did they create civilization on Earth in the first place? Please share your answers to these questions as your own sci-fi story in the comment. Thank you for watching.